with an event like Roseburg, it's important that we let people know what's happening early on and, and not to get the information wrong. But to do that, you have to talk to the woman who's looking for her daughter and has no idea if she, she's alive or not. And that requires, I think, a light touch. Um, you don't go into it barking questions in the way that sometimes uh, reporters do, TV reporters and print reporters. Um, and I didn't see a lot of that, to be fair. I mean, I don't think anyone was egregious, uh, but everyone is trying to speak with whoever they can. And, and that involves some pushing, or at least um, approaching people's space and asking if they can talk to you about something. And that can be a little touchy when everyone is as tense as they are. It's hard to expect them to speak with you at a time like this. It, it, for me, it's personally hard to envision that I would even want to speak with someone like me at a time like that. I think I would rather just leave it be and hang up. But um, I think when you start to have these conversations, you find often there is a willingness from folks to talk about um, to talk about these things or at least speak to the life of the person who might have just passed away. And so. Uh, if that's there, that's great, and, and I think you, you should approach an interview like that being confident or at least open to the possibility that someone will want to do that and not preclude it in the way you approach them. Uh, I mean, I remember you know, my voice shaking the first time you, you, I called a mom of a, a girl who just died, and, and just, you know, it's an incredibly hard thing to get used to. Uh, I'm still not used to it, and I still hate it every time. Um, but. You, you do get this, a feel for interviews like that after a while, and, and they can be a really positive thing for, for the people who are being interviewed. So, um, you know, don't always close yourself off to that. It's necessary in a situation like this, and if you do it well, it's, it's not at all a bad thing. And so I was, uh, I was approaching anyone uh, I could that, that looked like they might be open to talk. If, if it was clear that someone was, you know, um, weeping or walking furiously away from other reporters. I didn't, you know, I didn't badger them. But to the extent there were people leaving the building that might have uh, shreds of information that we hadn't heard, um, I, was, I was asking. One of the things about the group dynamic is, um, you know, when you're in a press conference and, and the sheriff's not saying much, um, there is absolutely a, a working together sort of uh, formation where people are trying to chip away at these facts together and you're, you're playing off one reporter's questions to try to receive sort of the, a deeper answer, at least something substantive. And the sheriff in this instance was not offering anything substantive at you know, most points. But, um, or if you missed something, or, or if you know, there's, there's names going off on Twitter all the time and, and you're curious where people are getting this information, I, I just found a lot of uh, goodwill among the reporters that were on the ground in terms of Oh, you can find it here, or, or sure they released that uh, an hour ago, um, and not and not just you know uh, screw off. I'm trying to get my story in. Like we need to beat you on this.